Hi there, I'm Miles Peterson, and you're watching The 3D Engineer, and today I'm going to be doing a quick overview and test of my new and approved revamped Mini SD10 Siren. Now, I will admit, I'm a little bit embarrassed to even say this, but this is the second time I've revamped this Siren, so I've definitely had some history doing this before, and there's even a video on my channel about uh, the older versions of this thing, so if you want to check that out, I have a video here. Now those old versions were great and all, but they were just inaccurate. Uh, I couldn't get the pitch too accurate on all of them, so I finally got that right. I finally nailed that on this new version you see right here in front of you. For those interested, 3D files to download and print your own are in the description of this video. Now of course you will need an account on Tinkercad to download them, but as always, that's free and I do highly recommend it. Alright, let's not keep you all waiting. Let's do a quick overview and test of the siren. Alright, here's the Mini SD10 Siren up close. Now we'll just be doing a quick overview of this thing so you can see how this thing works and how I put mine together. And then we'll get to a quick test. So uh, here's my new SD10 and actually I have my, my old SD10 here and wow, can you see quite the difference there? Yeah, it, it's gone through some changes. But uh, if you'll notice, the reflectors, unlike the old version, are actually screwed on to the top and bottom cones as well as the deflection band here and that's much more realistic to the real thing. These ones had a peg system, and well, that worked. It's just, I find that annoying, so I finally dropped that system, and this is working great. This entire siren uses M2 screws, but you could also make this thing work with uh, number two size screws. Uh, that's metric and imperial, but number two screws will work too, and those are the same screws I used on quite a lot of my other sirens, but it's just that M2 screws are a bit smaller, and they fit into the reflectors a bit better and they don't look as big so yeah deflection band this sg10 actually has a deflection band yeah that this one doesn't every time i put a deflection band on my older version sd10 it would stuff it up really bad and i've mentioned that in older videos so i chose not to add one to this one but with this siren i finally got the rotor and stator scaled to the point that i can put a deflection band on here and it won't mess with the pitch how great is that I also have my Federal Signal Corporation logo there. Uh, some SD10s actually have that on the deflection band, so that's pretty accurate. If you'll notice, it's actually the same used on my Model 2 and Model 5. Here's my Model 5 right here. That is the same exact sticker. It just fit on there really well, so I chose to add it. Let's look at the bottom. Oh, gosh. Poor thing. Oh, my gosh. Let's look at the bottom of this thing here. There's the air intake, the legs. The bottom of this thing... Oh, if I can get... If I can get in there. There's the rotor, and what's really cool about this thing is that it's a resin printed rotor. So I printed that thing on my resin printer, and gosh, the details came out spot on. And this thing is actually quite heavy, being printed in resin rather than just standard PLA filament. So it gives this thing a really cool wind down, and uh, quite a long wind up, so it sounds really realistic. The screws from the reflectors do stick down on the bottom cones just a bit, but that's not too careful. If you're really worried about it, you can add some glue or something on there to make it less pointy, but I didn't. Here's the legs. Also use uh, M2 screws. I think these are M2 by 8, so 8 centimeters, sorry, 8 millimeters long. Same can be said down here for the uh, mounting plate stand of the siren, whatever you call it. Here's the back of the siren, and that's my USB cable going up into the top cone, and that connects to the motor. And we'll open that up in just a second. All right, the top of the siren popped off very easily while well, still uh, pulling this thing on pretty tightly. That's beautiful. There's the ring that just pops in place right there. And something here that I, that's quite a bit different from my older versions is that this SD10 now uses a motor cover. And here it is. The motor cover houses my 130 DC motor that I salvaged from a gear motor. Uh, you don't have to do that, but I did, and that's working out for me. Inside there, there's a couple pitch reduction resistors, one hooked to the USB, because the pitch is a bit on the higher end, because I was using a higher speed motor. But no problem with that. Uh, that I eventually, with just a couple resistors, I think a 3.3 ohm and a 1 ohm resistor together, uh, wired to the motor to USB, we get perfect pitch, and it sounds excellent. And we'll hear that in just a minute. So yeah, this uh, comes out of the motor cover, and that's hooked directly to the motor with a few resistors. That uh, comes down through the through the deflection band, and out through the bottom cone, just like the real thing. Alright, now, without further wait, let's hear this thing in action. I'll pop the top cone back on. Alright, let's hear this thing in action. Now, one quick thing, uh, despite using the same exact rotor and stator as my Model 5T, 
<laughs> my SD10 is actually quite a bit louder than my Model 5T. I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe it's something to do with a lo having a longer air intake, or maybe this big shroud uh, helping direct the sound out. But yeah, it's just quite a bit louder than my Model 5T. So uh, we'll also see results, real results, with my decibel meter here. But what I think is cool is that that actually lines up with real results, because if I'm not mistaken, real SD10s are actually a little bit louder than real Model 5Ts. So uh, that's kind of pretty cool. Now with that said, let's get to testing finally. Uh, let's just do a quick alert. I will be doing this by hand, but remember this is plugged in by USB, and this uses a resin printed rotor, so the wind up and wind down are pretty long. Here we go. Short alert. <laughs> that sounded awesome. That that was really good. That that sounded like an SD10, I'll say. All right, now let's do a short attack. Uh, just a couple cycles of attack. I can't hold my decibel reader anymore because I'm going to be doing this with my hand. Here we go. Yep, still winding down, and it stopped. There you go. Well, there you have it. That was my miniature SD10 in action. Man, this thing is quite loud. In fact, uh, well, f well, putting this thing together in earlier stages, uh, I was sounding it off, and it actually kind of hurt my ears, which is something my Model 5T didn't do to me. So, it, <laughs> I'd say it is louder, but I guess that's just me claiming. Well, there you have it. That was a quick overview and test of my miniature SD10 Siren, new and improved and revamped for good. I think I finally got this thing to the point that I can probably sell this, and I will be pretty soon hopefully if things go well. So you might want to consider subscribing so you don't miss out on that. Now as for a quick spoiler, I'm also revamping my mini Eclipse 8. Uh, some of the parts are quite a bit different. I've got a new stator design, and there's a resin printed Eclipse 8 rotor. Just how cool is that? And there's some dual shaft 390 motors. I should hopefully be incorporating that too. A miniature 40 V2T. Yeah, that's right. A Sentry Siren. A dual headed Super Cyrix. I'm really excited about that one. And I'll have to buy another one for uh, Model M, which I do plan to be making soon. So just so everyone's aware, I got a lot more mini sirens coming. And good things take time, so it'll just be a while. I hope you can all understand. I'm Miles Peterson, and you stay creative.